Okay, in the today's lecture, we will discuss about the determinant of adjacency matrix of a graph on n vertices. So let's start with the definition. Definition. Let A be an n cross n matrix. So let A be a matrix in the set of all n cross n matrices or the set of real numbers. <clears throat> then we define the determinant of A. Then determinant of the matrix is defined to be equal to, this is summation over the permutation sigma, this sign of the permutation sigma, then product i from one to n, a i sigma of i, where, where the sum is taken over all permutation sigma, where the sum is taken over all permutation sigma in Sn and this notation Sgn of n that which is defined to be the signum or the sign of a permutation and Sgn of sigma is the sign of permutation. Is the sign or signum of permutation. Is the signum of permutation sigma, which is defined to be one, which is equal to one if sigma is an even permutation if sigma is an even permutation and is equal to and is minus one if sigma is an odd permutation. So that is, okay, so that is this SGN of sigma, this is equal to one if sigma is an even permutation. And this is equal to minus one if sigma is an odd permutation. So therefore, this is the definition of a determinant, which is the sum over all the permutations in Sn and is defined as signum of a permutation in the product A i sigma of i. So before proceeding to the theorem about the determinant of an adjacency matrix, we will take up an example to uh, properly understand how this definition works. So let's take an example of a two cross two matrix. So an example that A be a matrix of order two, there's A11, A12, A21, A22. Then according to this definition, then determinant of this matrix A, this is equal to summation over all the permutations over S2, and then sigma of the permutation and the, then the product of this AI and sigma of AI. Now, since we know that this uh, S2 has just two permutations, so let's call those permutations as sigma one and sigma two. So then this summation sigma belonging to S2, then sigma of sigma in product, now here I runs from one to two, AI sigma of I. 
So now here, the sigma has two values. Either it is an identity permutation in S2 or it is that non-identity permutation of order two in S2. Now, the sigma belongs to S2, which is equal to the identity permutation and which sends one into one and two into two. And then we have the non-identity permutation denoted by one, two, where under this permutation, one goes to two and two goes to one. So therefore, determinant of A, therefore, determinant of A. Now this is equal to summation. Sorry, not the summation. Now we will replace this summation. So this is first term is sigma of sigma one, then the product a i sigma i, then it is a one sigma one, sigma one of one. So let's call these two permutations as sigma one and sigma two. Now let's call this identity permutation as sigma one and this non-identity permutation as sigma two. Now this is <clears throat> sigma of sigma one, a one, sigma one of one, then a two, sigma two of two then plus sigma of the permutation sigma two, then a one, sigma two of one, then a two, sigma two of two. So this is equal to, now as we know that the sigma one, which is an even permutation, which is an identity permutation is an even permutation. So therefore here sigma of sigma one is equal to one, now this is a one and under an identity permutation one goes to one. So this a one one here and then a two and again, sorry, this is sigma one of two here. So therefore this again, sigma one of two is again equal to two. So this one times a one one into a two two. Then plus now sigma, sigma two, sigma two is a permutation of length two. So therefore it is an odd permutation so therefore, sigma of sigma two is equal to minus one. Now, a one, sigma two of one. Now, sigma two sends one into two. So therefore, this a one, two, then here a two. Now, sigma two sends two into one. So therefore, this a two, one. So this is equal to a one, one, a two, two, minus a two, one, a two, two. So a two, one into a one two. So this is a one one a two two, a one two into a two one. <clears throat> now let's take up a theorem. And this theorem is like let G be a graph. with vertex set with vertex set V of G, which is equal to one, two, up to N. Let this one, two, three, up to N be the vertices of the graph G and let A be the adjacency matrix. Let A be the adjacency matrix of G. Then determinant of A, where A is the adjacency matrix of G, this is equal to summation minus one power N minus C one of H minus C of H into two power C of H, where the sum is over all spanning elementary subgraphs, spanning elementary subgraphs H of G. So the sum is taken over all the spanning elementary subgraphs H of G and 
C1 of H is the number of components, number of components in H and C of H is the number of cycle components in H. Cycle components in H. And also an elementary subgraph is actually a basic definition in graph theory. Elementary subgraphs are those graphs This elementary subgraph is uh, a subgraph which consists of either K2s or the cycle CNs. So any subgraph that is consisting of either the edges, that is whose components are either K2s or the cycles with some at least three vertices, then such graphs are known as elementary subgraphs. Now the sum is running over all the spanning elementary subgraphs. That is the elementary subgraphs that also contain all the vertices of the graph G. Then in that elementary subgraph C1 of H will denote the number of components in that elementary subgraph and C of H will denote the number of cycle components in that elementary subgraph. So therefore the if we have A is the adjacency matrix of a graph G, then <clears throat> determinant of A is equal to the sum over all the element subgraphs minus one power n minus c one h minus c of h into two power c of h. Now, before taking the proof of this theorem, we will take up an example that help us that will help us in better understanding of how this proof works. So, let's take an example first, and then we will go into the proof. So, an example. In this example, we will find the determinant, find determinant of adjacency matrix of the graph G of the graph G using the previous theorem, using previous theorem where G is a graph where G is this graph. So let this be the graph. <clears throat> okay, now let's take one more edge here. Now let's the vertices of this graph be one two, three, four, and five. Now we will compute the determinant of this graph using the <coughs> previous theorem. So in the solution, we first have to evaluate what are the spanning elementary subgraphs. So let's write the spanning elementary subgraphs first, then let H1 be an elementary spanning subgraph let it consist of the edge one phi u. So this is the edge one phi u, and then this triangle two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now similarly, let's construct another element spanning subgraph H2, and let this be the edge. Let this consist of this triangle one, four, five. This is one, four, five, and this edge two, three. So this again an element subgraph because it is consisting of the cycles and the K2s only. 
Now again, we can construct an element subgraph H3 and let this be the cycle. One, two, three, four, and five. Now these are the only three element subgraphs in this graph. So therefore the determinant of A is, so then determinant of the adjacency matrix of this graph, this is equal to first minus one power. Now here N is equal to five. So it is five minus C1 of H minus C of H. So the C1 of H1, C of H1, then plus minus one power pi u minus C1 of H2 minus C of H2, then plus minus one power pi u minus C1 of H3 minus C of H3. In fact, we should have also here, we have also this term. So here we have two power H C of H1. And similarly here we have two power C of H2. And here we have two power C of H3. Now this is equal to minus one power phi u minus. Now C1 of H1 denotes the number of components in H1 and number of components is two here. So it is two. Now number of cycle components is one here. So it is minus one, then two power C of H1, number of cycle components in this H1. So that's again equal to one because there is just one cycle C3 in this H1. Then plus, now again, minus one power pi u minus C1 of H2, total number of components in this H2, that is two, minus number of cycle components in H2, that is one, then two power number of cycle components in H2, that's again one. Then plus, again, minus one power, phi minus, number of components is equal to one, number of cycle components in H3 is again equal to one, and then we have two power number of cycle components. So therefore this first term is, uh, this is two, then second term is also two, and the third term is minus two. So therefore, the determinant of the adjacency matrix is equal to two. Now, the proof of the theorem. Proof of the theorem. <clears throat> So by in the theorem, we have stated that we have a determinant of A. This is equal to, by definition, this is summation over sigma, then signum of a permutation, then the product A i sigma i. So this is A one, sigma one, then A two, sigma two, and so on, A n, sigma n. So this comes from the definition of a determinant where the sum, where the summation was over all permutations, where the sum runs over all permutations, in Sn, the symmetry group of degree n. All permutations in Sn on the vertex set one, two, up to n. Now let's choose some non-identity permutation in this Sn and let's try to compute what is the signum of that permutation in terms of the elementary subgraphs? Now let sigma be, let this A1, sigma 1, 
a2 sigma 2 so on a n sigma n <clears throat> Okay, let's, uh, we have to choose a permutation. Let, uh, so let's consider, let's choose. Okay, now let this the same thing. A1 sigma one, A2, Let A one sigma one, A two sigma two, so on, A n sigma n be a non identity, be a non zero term, be a non zero term in the sum in the sum of determinant of A. Let's choose some non-zero term here. Now we have uh, selected some sigma here and now the sigma is a permutation Sn, so therefore it will admit a cycle decomposition. Now as, now as sigma belongs to Sn, Thus, sigma admits a cycle decomposition. Thus, sigma, which is a permutation on these n symbols, and it is mapping, suppose, 1 into sigma of 1, 2 into sigma of 2, and so on, n into sigma of n. So now, as sigma belongs to S, and thus sigma admits. a cycle decomposition in SN. Cycle decomposition in SN. And now the cycles of this sigma are either, we will just take up the non-identity cycles, that is the cycles of length at least two. Now this cycle, this admit is a cycle decomposition Sn of length two and higher than two. And higher than two. That means this sigma admits a cycle decomposition where the length of the cycle is either two or it is bigger than two. Now here we will treat a cycle of length two in this permutation as an edge, and we will treat a cycle of length higher than two, and we will identify that with a, with a cycle in the elementary subgraph. So here, the cycle of length two a cycle of length two in the cycle decomposition of sigma in Sn the cycle of length two is identified with an edge is identified with an edge and a cycle of length greater or greater than two and a cycle of length greater than two, greater than two corresponds to CK, corresponds to CK or CK is where K is greater or equal to three. So here in the cycle decomposition of sigma in SN, now the cycle decomposition will contain the non-identity uh, cycles of length two and of and cycles of length bigger than two. Now here we will treat the cycle of length two. It is actually K2. We will identify it with an K2 in the elementary spanning subgraph and a cycle of length bigger than two in the cycle decomposed of sigma 
we will identify it with a cycle CK with at least three vertices in the element spanning subgraph H of G. So this actually means that every cycle decomposition, whenever we have some known identity permutation, then it is cycle decomposition actually gives rise to the elementary spanning elementary subgraphs on the vertex set V of G. So thus each non-zero term, thus each non-identity uh, or a non-zero term, non, thus each non-identity permutation in the sum corresponds to a union of corresponds to a union of k toes and c k's because whenever we have a permutation sigma, we can express that as a product of disjoint cycles. Then a cycle of length two will correspond to a K2 in an element spanning subgraph and a cycle of length bigger than two in that cycle decomposition of sigma will correspond to some CK. So that is each non-zero term, that is each non-zero term arises, each non-zero term arises from an elementary spanning subgraph, from an elementary spanning subgraph. So therefore, whenever we have an elementary spanning subgraph that actually gives a cycle decomposition. That elementary spanning subgraph, whenever we have k2 there, we will write a cycle of length 2 corresponding to it. And whenever we have a cycle of length bigger than 2 in that elementary spanning subgraph, we will identify it with a permutation of length at least 3. So whenever we have an elementary spanning subgraph, that will actually consist of, consist of K2s and CKs. Now K2 is a cycle of length two in the cycle decomposition of sigma and a cycle of length at least three it corresponds to a permutation, corresponds to a cycle permutation in the cycle decomposition of sigma of length at least three. So that is every non-zero term arises from an elementary spanning subgraph with vertex set V of G is equal to one to up to N. So whenever we have an element spanning subgraph on this set of vertices, then every K2 will correspond to some cycle of length two and every CK where K is greater or equal to three corresponds to some cycle of length greater or equal to three. Now suppose, now suppose the term, now suppose the term that we have chosen A1 sigma one up to AN sigma N. Suppose now this corresponds as we have see, shown that every a term in this determinant corresponds to some elementary spanning subgraph. And in fact, every elementary spanning subgraph corresponds to some cycle decomposition of a permutation sigma. So suppose this term corresponds to the elementary spanning subgraph H. Elementary 
spanning subgraph H of G. Then we have see what will be the sign of this permutation. Then the sign of sigma, then the sign of sigma is minus one power, minus one power n minus d. And this actually comes from the theory of symmetric groups. Now the sign of sigma in Sn is defined to be equal to minus one power n minus d, where d is the number of cycles D is the number of sorry, cycles exactly in the cycle decomposition of in the cycle decomposition of sigma. Now, as we know that every sigma can be written as a product of disjoint cycles. Now, if the number of cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma is equal to d then the sign of the cycle then the sign of the sigma is defined to be equal to minus one power n minus d actually this sigma will be an even permutation if this n minus d is an even number and this sigma will be an odd permutation if this n minus d is an odd number where n denotes the degree of the permutation group and d is the number of cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma in fact the non-trivial cycles so therefore, D is the number of cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma so that, so that this signum of sigma, which we have now seen is equal to minus one power n minus D, but now this D is the number of cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma, but now these cycles actually occur cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma actually correspond to K2s and CKs. So this is equal to minus one power n minus number of components in the spanning elementary spanning subgraph. And the number of components is actually the total number of K2s and the total number of CKs. So it is equal to the C1 of H minus C of H. Because the C1 of H plus C of H is the total number of uh, components in the elementary spanning subgraph and the total number of components in the elementary spanning subgraph actually correspond to the number of cycles in the cycle decomposition of sigma. So therefore, the sign of the sigma is equal to minus one power n minus c1 of h minus c of h. So now, now if we have a cycle in the elementary spanning subgraph, now suppose, now suppose if we have this cycle, suppose this any cycle, let's call this as uh, V1, V2, V3, so on. This is Vn and Vn minus one. So if we have any cycle on n minus one vertices, so since we have, then the cycle can be written like this. This is V1 goes to V2, and so on up to Vn, then my V1. But the same cycle, so we have written, this is the cycle, we can write it in this way, in the clockwise direction. But now the same cycle in graph can also be written as V1 goes to Vn, V1 is adjacent with Vn, then Vn is adjacent with Vn minus one, and so on, then adjacent with V2, now this adjacent with V1. So therefore, the same cycle can be written from V1, V2, up to so on to Vn, and then V1, but it can also be written in the reverse direction. So therefore, every cycle Cn has two different two expressions. So now since, and but this happens only for the cycles of length bigger or equal to three. So if this n is greater or equal to three, actually if we have an edge, on two vertices V1 and V2, then V1 and V2 and V2, V1 actually mean the same permutation. But now here, if we look, now this edge corresponds to a cycle 
in an elementary subgraph cycle of length two, but same age corresponds to some cycle in the cycle decomposition of sigma. So if we write this edge as v1, v2, or we write this edge as v2, v1, then it will represent the same cycle in the cycle decomposition of sigma. So therefore, this k2 will just has one expression. It has a unique expression in the cycle decomposition of some sigma. But if we have a cycle of length bigger or equal to three, then we have it actually corresponds to different permutations. One permutation is one, two, three, up to n, but then the same cycle can be written in the reverse order as one, then n, then n minus one, then two. It can be written in the reverse order, but now this permutation and this permutation, these are two different permutations in Sn, but it represents the same cycle Cn. So therefore, each cycle of length greater or equal to three has two expressions, and those two expressions actually represent two different permutations in Sn. Now, since each cycle, that's each cycle like this, V1, V2, up to V, T, minus, V1 can also be expressed as expressed as uh, this V1, then Vt, then Vt minus 1, and so on, up to V2, and then V1. Thus, each cycle Thus, each cycle can be associated, can be associated to a cyclic permutation, to a cyclic permutation in two ways. So therefore, actually every cycle has corresponding to it two different cycles in Sn. And thus each spanning subgraph, and thus each spanning subgraph, spanning subgraph gives rise to gives rise to 2 power c of h, where c of h denotes the number of cycle components in the elementary spanning subgraph. So each such cycle can be ex expressed in two different ways in a permutation in Sn. So therefore, each such elementary spanning subgraph will give rise to 2 power c of h terms in the summation. In the summation. So thus, determinant of A. Now, how we have taken the determinant of A, it is the sign of the permutation that we have proven to be equal to minus one power this thing. So this is equal to minus one power n minus c1 of h in minus c of h. Then, since every permutation Every cycle gives rise to two different permutations in Sn, a cycle of length greater or equal to three. So therefore, we have each such spanning element, spanning subgraph gives rise to two power c of h terms. So therefore, we have this multiplication as two power c of h. So this completes the proof of this theorem. Thank you so much.